Um, welcome to another installment of People Behind the Science. Uh, we're here in Boulder talking to Scott Kelly today from San Diego State University. So Scott, tell me a little bit about the research you do in the built environment. Um, I've been doing research in the built environment for a long time now. I started off with shower curtains, did hospital therapy pools, airplanes, and I was doing microbial diversity in these environments. Um, and so lately I've moved into, unfortunately, uh, viral diversity in these environments. And there's very little known about environmental viral diversity in any environment, um, much less in the indoor setting, where it's almost completely unknown. People have cultured a lot of things, and you can get influenza, and you can get rhinovirus, and you can get you know, norovirus, but um, there's clearly loads more viruses in these environments, and um, um, we just don't really have any idea of how they spread, how they build, where they come from, what's the association with the bacteria that are there, what's the association with the fungi, you know, what's the association with, you know, like gender or you know airflow or anything. So that's uh, that's one. Right. So you were doing some pretty cool stuff. You just presented a talk where you were taking bleach and you're trying to wipe the viruses away. Yeah. They, they they're pretty persistent, right? They wouldn't they wouldn't go away. That's right. The bacteria were as well. Actually, it's part of a, a larger study. So we're looking at um, uh, microbial diversity uh, succession and changes over time. Um, and we chose the uh, restroom as our model because it already had a, a brilliant study. Um, already done by it um, at the University of Colorado, and we could follow up that study because we knew that uh, they had very distinct communities in different parts of a restroom setting. So they had like the floor in front of the toilet seat was really different than the soap dispenser was really different from that, and it was very very consistent. So we could go in saying, okay, we repeated that all with um, the same kind of bacterial primers, 16S and diversity, saw the exact same pattern. Um, so now that we're looking at how fast does that kind of thing develop. So what you're talking about is what we did is I wanted to see, um, I actually thought I was doing a time series, <laughs> but I was fairly ignorant. So what, I did, what we did, I said, well, let's sterilize it in the morning and see what happens eight hours later. And let's do that repeatedly over, over time. But each time is like a new starting point. Right, right, right. Although it was really, it's turned out to be quite interesting. Um, first of all, it took a lot longer to kill everything off than we thought. So we didn't do culture or anything. What we did was we looked under the microscope to see if we saw any trace of any cells, either bacterial or viral. And we found that we would, we would took 10% bleach on an area. We'd do, you know, tar time zero, lots of stuff. Time two minutes, still lots of stuff. 10 minutes later, still a bunch right. of, a few things. 20 minutes later, all gone. You know, so it took, it was ridiculous. It took 20 minutes to eradicate everything. Right. And then we sample eight hours later. Right. So, so now the, we're continuing. That. So Sorry. those hand sanitizers probably are not doing anything. Right. Well, you know, yeah, I wouldn't want to stick my hands in ten percent bleach for any length of time. You know, permanent, you know, pool smell. Right. Um, and start degrading your, yourself. And another thing you're dealing with, I mean, bacteria are tiny enough, but viruses are even smaller. So you yes. were talking about, you know, really small amounts of DNA. That's a, a huge issue you've been dealing with. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean. When you do the bacteria, you have a massive advantage for diversity studies because you can target a single gene that they all have, and you can use PCR to get enough of it to do something like um, So that's that's one advantage you already have just to look at diversity. Viruses don't have that, right. so you really have to do a, so what's called metagenomics, and you really have to purify them because you want to separate out the massive amounts of bacterial DNA, which is like a hundred to one ratio genome size. Um, you have all sorts of problems. There's also viral cells in the bacteria that you won't want to confuse with the free living bacteria. So. Um, purification, of course, loses stuff. And so you start out, we found out first of all that the ratio of viruses to bacteria was 0.7 to 1, whereas normally 10 to 1. So you're already starting with really low, you have low biomass, you have a lower biomass than you actually thought with the viruses, and then you purify it and you always lose things. Right, you always right. lose things. So you get down, you purify, we checked it, double checked it, got rid of all the free DNA, and we still, you know, we have very little. But then we have to amplify it randomly right, to get right, enough right. to sequence. And, through all that contamination, you know, just a little bit of bacterial contamination just ruins your whole day. But you're working on a really cool, not an organism, <laughs> but you're working on a really cool taxa. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, exciting results. Well, yeah, there's, what, 10 to the 31 viruses That's on the crazy. planet. We need to know something. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, so I'll finish with one question. So sure. what is one uh, overarching kind of big question in the study of the built environment that really excites you right now? Um, I think, you know, when I'm going through this, I really would like to know, um, well, we're looking at how quickly and rapidly and repeatedly things progress into the middle environment. How long does it take? Who is really doing it? Because I'm starting to suspect that humans are doing 90% of what's going on, and it's really them and their behavior that is just generating all this. But I'd also like to know, 
you know, I'm getting the sense that the, a lot of these dry surfaces that we're talking about, the things aren't really happening there. They're just waiting for their opportunity. So I'd like to know how long they can wait around, how, how long after and who can survive these environments long enough to find their opportunity to grow again and become, say, a problem. Right, you know? right, right. So that's, those are kind of the things that I'm looking at. Yeah, well, I think we all want to know that. So yeah, thank you very true. much. You're welcome. And Thanks for uh, we'll be back with more. All right.